Happy July 1st, church family. If you haven't met yet, I'm Christina and part of the prayer ministry here at Church of the Front Range. Don't you just love that God has made us to be a church that is all word, all spirit, all worship, and all prayer? I love that God continues to unify us in prayers that are lifted up around the clock and our shared daily Bible reading. As we dive into Proverbs chapters 15 through 18 today, I wanted to share some information that I found out during my research and I thought was really interesting. I came across a short article by a Harold Williamton, who was the longest serving faculty member of Liberty University and known as Mr. Bible on the campus. In his writing on Proverbs, he said, quote, a proverb is a short sentence drawn from long experience and biblical wisdom is defined as seeing ourselves and our world through the eyes of God. I love that Solomon sought the wisdom of God, and in doing so, God used him to pass on this wisdom he gained to us. Proverbs is like one of the best books for guiding us each step of life, from childhood through adulthood. I mean, just think, if everyone read Proverbs, there would be no need for self-help or parenting books. Because there's just so much good stuff in all of these chapters, I thought I'd pull out a proverb from each to reflect on and then respond to. So in chapter 15, verse 3, it says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. Although much of the chapter talks about using wise words, this verse stood out to me the most because it was so convicting. It reminds me that God is omnipresent, everywhere, always, and not just present with us at all times, but watching us at all times. Some of you will remember the WWJD bracelets from the 90s, and this verse brought these to mind right away. Young believers in the 1990s would wear these bracelets as a visual reminder to act and speak in a manner that is honoring to Jesus and in a way that he would towards others. It was a cue to ask internally, what would Jesus do in a certain situation, and then act accordingly. A little cheesy maybe, but it worked. In just years of them first seeing the market, 17 million bracelets were sold. So how should we respond knowing that God is watching both those who are acting in good and evil ways? We love and honor whether we are in public or in private because God knows, he sees, and he hears us everywhere at all times. In chapter 16 verse 31, it was my favorite verse because it said, Gray hair is a crown of glory. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm pretty sure I turned gray early uh, because of being a mom to boys, but I digress. What the Holy Spirit really drew my attention to was the verses on making our own plans. Verse 1 says, The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Verse 3 says, Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. And verse 9 says, The mind of a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. As I reflect on these verses, I'm prompted to make sure I inquire of the Lord every day and that I really want my plans to be his plans. Because of free will, I can do whatever I want, but unless I ask him and submit my will to his, the plans I make are pretty certain to not turn out as well as if I'd asked God first what he thinks and what he'd like me to do and how. So have you made it a daily discipline to invite God into your decisions? big and small? If not, I encourage you to start today. In chapter 17, verse 22, we're told that a joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. We all know the idiom that comes from this proverb, laughter is the best medicine. Well, in doing some research, I found out that the benefits of good humor and laughter have been studied and found to have physical benefits, such as it boosts immunity, lowers stress hormones, decreases pain, relaxes your muscles, and can even prevent heart disease. We know if God tells us to have a joyful heart, we should follow his advice, but even the medical community supports this proverb to be lived out. So today, I hope you will laugh a little or a lot and put on a big happy grin to pass on the joy of the Lord to someone else. And lastly, in chapter 18, verse 21, we are told that Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. 
has some pretty strong language in regards to our words. Our words have the power of life or death. Again, I felt the Holy Spirit convicting me and bringing to mind times where my words were not honoring, not loving, not encouraging, and therefore not life-giving. We all know that we've been in conversations where we do not think before we speak and have what I like to call diarrhea of the mouth. Not a pleasant image, I know, but that's the point. We should be asking God for help to guard and filter our thoughts and words so that the only thing that we utter are, quote, gracious words like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body, end quote. And this phrase, of course, is another proverb from from chapter 16, verse 24. In response to this proverb, let's all be more mindful of what we say, email, text, and post. I remember back to chapter 15 that God is always watching the evil and the good. So if you need to order yourself a WWJD bracelet as a friendly reminder, maybe hop on Amazon right after this video. I will be. Thanks for joining me today, church family. I love you and I'm grateful to be serving alongside you. Blessings on your day.